<laughs> oh, um, yeah, mm, not quite there yet. Bumblebee is a very unusual movie, because it's one of those ultra-rare movies where you kind of get to see things from the Hollywood studio perspective and understand their frustrations. For years and years, Paramount makes these loud, mindless action movies that make billions of dollars at the box office. And all the while, everyone whines and complains that these movies are bad and that they have to have more heart and be more about character and so on and so on. And then, when the studio finally listens to the fans and makes a movie that is exclusively hard and character, nobody shows up to see it, at least not outside of China. And the golden question this brings up is, why is that? Why didn't people show up to see this movie? The fact that Bumblebee didn't succeed at the box office like Transformers usually do and barely even made its money back is the worst possible outcome for everybody. Because now, what is very likely to follow is the DC Warner Brothers effect of overreaction. In this case, we have a great film, but because it didn't make money, the studio starts getting anxious and begins to see problems in places where there are none. Recently, for example, the main producer of Transformers was out saying that there's a key component missing in Bumblebee. Essentially, he was implying that the movie was too much character and too little action, saying that in the future they plan to bring back the action-heavy Michael Bay style of Bayhem. Bayhem meaning things going boom. First of all, as to there not being things going boom in Bumblebee, I don't think that's really a valid claim, because uh, I'm pretty sure that there are things going boom in Bumblebee. However, I do agree with the producer's implication that there is a key component missing from this movie. There is one key problem that made this movie become a financial letdown. But the thing is, this problem isn't what you might first think it to be. Not what the producers might think it to be, not what the average moviegoer might think it to be. The problem of Bumblebee isn't that it's too much character and too little action. The problem of Bumblebee is that it's only character and no plot. As in, yeah, this film does not have a plot. And so, here's the game plan for today's video, fellas and fellerettes. Firstly, we'll see what this fact of Bumblebee not having a plot actually means. Secondly, we'll find out how that missing plot serves as the core reason behind this movie's box office failure. And finally, maybe we can also stumble on some sort of a fix to this problem. The main purpose of all this being to prove to Paramount that the solution they're looking for isn't to bring back Bayhem. And hopefully they are listening, because to be honest, Honest, we cannot go back to this. Since I did make the argument that Bumblebee has no plot, I guess the first thing I need to do is actually prove that argument. And perhaps the best way to do that is to look at the movie Bumblebee is directly inspired by, Steven Spielberg's E.T. If you bring up the basic premise of E.T., you might notice that this premise consists of two separate halves. A lonely boy finds a stranded alien, and together they must work to find the alien's way back home. The first half tells the overall concept and the starting point of the movie. That's the story. The second half explains what the movie is actually about, the main active goal that the characters are trying to achieve. That's the plot. Compare this to the premise of Bumblebee. A lonely girl finds a stranded alien robot, and uh, and then they hang out until bad guys eventually come for them. Are you starting to see where I'm getting at? To be fair to Bumblebee, the character work it does is fantastic. You really care about the girl, you really care about the robot. But the issue is, this movie is so focused on the characters and their relationship that it completely forgets to add in goals for them. As in, the characters don't really do anything, they don't have objectives that they're actively moving towards. Not until the very end, when Charlie has to save Bumblebee and then together they have to stop the Decepticons from calling in backup. 
You could argue that the main plot of the movie is for Charlie to hide Bumblebee from John Cena. And while that technically is a goal, not really. Because hiding isn't a cinematically active goal. It's the equivalent of a lazy kid telling his mom that he's being active because he's actively sitting in this chair eating nachos. Besides, if Charlie's goal really was to hide Bumblebee, she probably wouldn't be driving him all around town committing crimes. If you're still not convinced, here's one more thing. Perhaps the biggest giveaway that a movie doesn't have a proper plot is when it consists of events and scenes that happen only because the story needs them to happen in order to function. And in Bumblebee, there's a big bunch of scenes like this. For example, What is going on here? Do you want to check it out? Okay. We will be right back. Based on the dialogue you just heard, it's very clear that the characters ended up at the cliff randomly and have no actual reason to be there. They aren't there because they're looking for something. They aren't there because they're after something. They are there only because the story needs them to be, so that we can set up Charlie's heroic dive for later and also set up the egging scene, which leads to them being spotted by the police. Another example, the scene where Bumblebee is at home alone. got a hit, I think. Where's that location? On a short glance, this is a pretty funny and cute scene. But looking closer, it doesn't really make sense. Bumblebee did lose his memory, but he's still a grown adult, correct? I mean, he's still a soldier. So why does he act like a dumb little baby and stick his finger in a socket? Does he have a reason for it? Is it because he's trying to contact someone? No, it's because the story needs him to, so that the Decepticons can locate him. If you want more examples, just watch the movie and keep your eyes open. These scenes aren't hard to spot. But regardless, the villains in this movie have a clear active goal, but the main heroes don't. And if your main heroes don't have a goal, then you don't have a plot. And next up, let's see what happens when you don't have a plot. Charlie dives once more to rescue Bumblebee. Bumblebee is fine and needs no rescuing. The main purpose of movie marketing is to let the audience know in an intriguing way what your movie is about. And if your movie doesn't have an overarching plot and therefore isn't really about anything until the very end, there is nothing to market. In other words, a character exclusive blockbuster like Bumblebee is pretty much impossible to market. Look at Infinity War, which has one of the most effective movie marketing campaigns of all time. Even though this film is filled with multiple different characters and locations, locations and whatnot, the marketing always kept the essence of the movie very clear. Evil Thanos is trying to get the Infinity Stones to erase half of the universe, and the Avengers have to go put a stop to it. That, above all else, is what this movie is about. And it sounds a lot more intriguing than, say, the Avengers casually hang out on Earth having a good time, until Evil Thanos at some point comes to fight them. You might think of what I just said as a joke, but with Bumblebee, that was the only premise the marketing team had to market this movie, which will never work. And they must have realized it too, since they so hastily invented a goal specifically for the second trailer. Bumblebee, there is only one way to end this war. You must protect Earth and its people. If you've seen the movie, then you know that this line doesn't exist like so. Optimus doesn't say this. The goal of protecting the Earth isn't what this movie is about. And it's very obvious in the trailer as well. Because in one shot, we hear Optimus telling Bumblebee to protect humans. And in the next shot, we see Bumblebee fighting humans. Even more, protecting the Earth is such a generic and intangible plot that by itself, it doesn't really mean anything. And if moviegoers don't have a clear, intriguing plot to hook them, then they have no reason to show up. 
Same with word of mouth. Even though Bumblebee got positive responses from pretty much everybody, there was never a big rush at the theaters to see it, like there was with Black Panther for example. And again, I'd argue it's because at the end of the day, the movie isn't really about anything. If you wanted to recommend it to a friend, the only thing you could say was that, yeah, it's this great feel-good movie about this friendship between this girl and this robot, and yeah, that's about it. And like it or not, that's a characteristic of a low-budget indie film, not a must-see Hollywood blockbuster. In his interview, the Transformers producer mentioned that a common criticism he heard from viewers was that Bumblebee didn't have enough mayhem and action. And even though this criticism might have truth in it, once again, I believe that the real reason behind this criticism is the lack of an active plot. Even though I really enjoyed the characters of the movie, I was still constantly checking my watch in the theater, because it had been over an hour without any clue as to where the movie was going, which made it feel very stagnant. And if if a movie feels stagnant and like it's not going anywhere, in many viewers that can create the illusion that there must be too little action, when in fact there is action and mayhem sprinkled across the whole movie. I'm not going to act naive and say that big movies don't equal big audiences. If you make a massive cinematic experience and set it all around the world, of course it has more potential for a massive audience. But to say that Bumblebee didn't make money because it didn't have a loud product placement infested explosion montage every 5 minutes, I don't think that's true. The real reason, I think, is because this movie doesn't have a clear active plot and therefore isn't about anything, and therefore has nothing to hook the audience with. It's way here. Is there anyone that can help you? You have a family? Oh, who would be? Charlie has a goal of helping Bumblebee. No, me. Oh, who would be? Who am I? Never mind, that shit ain't real. Now that we've identified the missing plot as the main problem with Bumblebee, let's see in what way this problem could have been rectified. It's a pretty tough spot, because the overall story of this movie revolves around Autobots establishing Earth as their new base. But because the heart of this movie is a small, intimate story about the friendship between a girl and a robot, you can't make the actual plot directly link with that. You can't just give this little girl a huge goal of fighting off armies of enemies and single-handedly saving the world and whatnot. That isn't intimate, and therefore we cannot use that. But luckily, we don't need to. All we need to do is give her a small goal with the illusion that it links with everything else. The reason I say this is because just recently I played through the PlayStation game God of War. For those of you who don't know, God of War is an epic tale about this God of War fighting against huge monsters and other gods. But those of you who do know, you already know that isn't what this game is actually about. Because at heart, this game is a very intimate story about a father and his boy. And accordingly, the main objective of the game is also very intimate. You need to take the ashes of your dead wife to the tallest mountaintop. That goal doesn't have anything to do with fighting monsters or gods, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that you know what all of it is about. Why am I battling the shirtless Norse god of light? Why am I willingly rowing inside the belly of a giant snake? Oh yeah, I have to get my wife's ashes to the mountaintop. The goal isn't directly linked with anything else going on, but it works, because there is an illusion that it is. Using this lesson taught by God of War, here's what the main driving goal of Bumblebee could for example be. I'm not saying this is the only right choice, I'm just giving an example. Since Bumblebee lost his voice box in the beginning, the goal of Charlie, very much like was the case in E.T., is now to help him find that voice box slash transmitter and repair him, so that they can contact his home and find out who he is. This objective fits Bumblebee because he has to know his past, and it also fits Charlie because she's a skilled mechanic who never got to say goodbye to his now dead father, and therefore now has nobody to talk to. Maybe the voice box is just lost, maybe it's held by John Cena, doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter if the voice box ultimately even works, as long as we always actively move towards it. Even if you don't like the actual goal that I'm proposing, you can't deny the fact that it pretty much automatically fixes a lot of the stuff we've talked about. For example, all those random scenes where things happen just because the story needs them to happen. Now, 
know Charlie and Bumblebee don't go to the cliff just randomly. They go there because there maybe is someone there with information about the voice box. Now Bumblebee doesn't stick his finger in the socket just because. He does it because he maybe excitedly wants to test out his newly found voice box and so and so on. But most importantly, you now have a clear plot to hook the audiences with. This plot isn't necessarily always linked with John Cena and the Autobot War and the two Decepticons, but again, it doesn't matter. All that does matter is the illusion of a direct link. What matters is that the audience always knows what all of this is about and where things are headed. For example, compare these two premises. A lonely girl finds a stranded alien robot and then the two casually hang out until evil government agents and Decepticons come for them. Or a lonely girl finds a stranded alien robot and together they must then fight their way past evil government agents and Decepticons in order to find the robot's lost voice box transmitter and uncover his secret past. I can't speak for you, but I do know which movie I would go see. And all it took was a tiny bit of plot.